Defensive driving. Before we go any further, let's talk about what defensive driving is. Defensive driving definitely involves awareness. Awareness of other drivers and their actions. Awareness of road conditions and how to deal with them. And awareness of potential hazards on the road. The defensive driver drives with all of those things in mind and takes deliberate steps to minimize danger, not just for him or herself, but for everyone. Attitude. Attitude is the key to defensive driving. Too often, drivers approach the road and only think about their concerns, where they need to be and how long it will take to get there. Defensive driving means an attitude shift that puts safety first. Your safety and the safety of everyone around you. It encompasses the way you approach vehicle maintenance, interacting with other vehicles and accommodating other drivers. It means driving with concern for other people, first and foremost. Now let's talk a bit about the most important person in any driving situation. You, the driver. When it comes to accident prevention, remember, see, think, do. In every situation, you should be aware of and recognize potential hazards. That could mean snowy roads, a down power line, or even a drowsy driver in front of you. You should also understand how to handle specific hazards that you might encounter, whether they involve road conditions, other drivers, or your own vehicle. Finally, learn to act fast when hazards arise. Don't take a wait-and-see approach. See, think, do. See the hazards. Think about defenses. Do what you need to do and do it fast. This is the foundation of safe driving. Fatigue. Fatigue is a serious danger for drivers. It can also sneak up on you, which makes it possibly even more dangerous than drugs or alcohol. You might not realize you're about to nod off before it's too late. Tiredness can come from physical or mental exhaustion, or a combination of both. Either way, being tired can severely affect your concentration, judgment, and reaction times with awful consequences. It's also not safe or reliable to combat fatigue with caffeine, drugs, or other stimulants that can also affect your physical control. If you're tired enough that fatigue is a legitimate threat to your driving ability, talk to your supervisor or figure out how you can be better prepared to handle your work. Emotions. Angry. Frustrated? Upset? If you are, you're not at your best and you shouldn't drive. An angry driver is an aggressive driver, and an aggressive driver is a dangerous driver. Not every day is perfect, but if you're agitated or upset, don't drive. Take a few minutes to relax, take a few deep breaths, calm yourself, and get into the right headspace before you head out on the road. You might even want to take a quick walk to settle down. Do what it takes to get yourself under control, even if it means calling ahead to say you'll be a bit late. Inspections. An unsafe vehicle makes you a hazard for everyone on the road, no matter how skilled or experienced you may be. Regular vehicle inspections are a key to keeping your vehicle working properly and safely. Basically, motor vehicle inspection is a three-stage process consisting of pre-trip, in-trip, and post-trip inspections. The pre-trip inspection, or circle check, is performed daily and is meant to identify potential problems in advance. They could be tire problems, headlight issues, or other routine maintenance concerns that should be addressed before you drive. In some cases, depending on the vehicle and the type of service it sees, legislation and or company policy may require you to complete a formal vehicle inspection report. It's important to make the pre-trip inspection a part of your daily routine, with an emphasis on three key areas, the engine compartment, inside the cab, and the outside circle check. Whether the law requires it or not, your daily circle check can save you a lot of headaches on the road and save the company a lot of money in unscheduled maintenance. The in-trip inspection is a process of monitoring the vehicle as you drive. That means watching gauges and maintenance lights, listening for strange sounds, and paying attention to changes in the way your vehicle operates, brakes, or steers. Any changes to the above can mean an impending problem and should be reported as soon as possible to your supervisor or maintenance staff. Stopping distance. 
Stopping distance refers to the space it takes for your vehicle to come to a stop when you hit the brakes. Three factors are involved in stopping distance. Perception time, which is approximately 0.75 seconds. Reaction time, which is also approximately 0.75 seconds. And braking distance, which is greatly affected by vehicle weight and speed, plus factors including weather and road conditions. Here are a couple of key points to keep in mind when it comes to stopping distance. First, double the weight equals double the stopping distance. Second, double the vehicle speed will increase stopping distance by four times. Always consider your vehicle's weight when it's loaded or pulling something. That load will make a huge difference when it comes to your stopping distance. Also, err on the side of caution when it comes to stopping. Don't take chances. Shoulder drop off. You may find yourself in a situation where two or more of your wheels run off the pavement and onto the road's gravel shoulder. This is scary, but it's important not to panic. If you're on the shoulder, grip the steering wheel tightly and again, do not brake. Ease off the gas pedal instead to help you slow down. Hold the vehicle on the shoulder for a few seconds instead of swerving back onto the road. Stabilize the vehicle on the shoulder and then ease back onto the road when it's safe.